Hi everyone, I'm Luke Roloffs and I'm a postdoc at the Australian National University. Uh, and I'm going to say a bit to explain the material covered in my paper about what I call amodal mind perception. So this paper is basically prompted by me having seen that two ideas which both are equally attractive to me are usually regarded as being incompatible. Those are the ideas on the one hand that because mental states are private in the sense of not open to public observation, uh, even in principle, uh, for us to know anything about other people's mental states, we need to go through two distinct stages. We need to first perceive something about them, about the way that they're acting or the way that their body is affected. And then we have to uh, take a second step to kind of reconstruct or infer the mental state that accompanies that physical state. That's the, the broad idea that I label inferentialism, and as I say, I've, I find that quite a plausible idea. On the other hand, there's this idea that I'm going to call perceptualism, which says that when we perceive other people, a lot of the time part of the content of our perception is that they are feeling a certain way, or that they are trying to do a certain thing, or that they're in some sort of mental state. Um, and if, if that's true, then it looks like we're perceiving people as being in mental states. And on the face of it, these two ideas are in conflict. One of them says that mental states are inferred. One of them says that they are, in at least some cases, perceived. And that's how they're usually taken in the literature, as rival, opposed positions. And my thought is that they may not be quite as opposed as they seem. In particular, that the sharp divide between inference and perception starts to break down when we look closely at something that has come to be called amodal perception. This is a very uh, widespread, very pervasive phenomenon in uh, ordinary perceptual experience, whereby we have a perceptual experience of an object whose content includes the object having other aspects that we're not perceiving. So. To take the standard example, if I look at my cat, I see one surface of it, the, the front side, but I nevertheless experience it as something that has other surfaces, surfaces that are concealed from me, that are uh, not currently visible. Uh, and on the one hand, this does seem to be part of the content of perception. If we try to sort of strip this away uh, and, and just confine ourselves to talking about the revealed surfaces and aspects of things, uh, I think we'd be left with something that has that was very unfamiliar, very kind of unnatural, that didn't really match the actual phenomenology that we have, the actual experience that we have of seeing things. But on the other hand, it's a uh, an inferential kind of process because our justification for believing, for like, accepting this uh, representation of the concealed aspects of things seems to be contingent for its justification on our having evidence provided by what is revealed. So if I get a, a perceptual impression that the far side of the cat is a certain way, I'm only justified in accepting and believing that uh, if it's supported by the evidence that I either have from background knowledge or from the way that the side of the cat I do see looks. And so in the paper, I simply propose that uh, mental states can be the, con the, sorry, the concealed aspects of a process which has at its revealed aspects the, uh, the behavioral expressions that they give rise to. Uh, and so, so that we can see people as minded, as having psychological depth in just the same way that we can see objects as three-dimensional, as having physical depth. And I argue that uh, this kind of account of mind perception allows us to combine what's attractive about both inferentialism and perceptualism. Uh, obviously that leaves a lot of questions still open about how exactly we characterize any of those, those terms like inference uh, or like what's going on with amodal perception, how does that work? Uh, and I would encourage uh, you to, to read the paper and read the very thoughtful and insightful commentaries by Joel and Jesse and ask any remaining questions in the comments.